Welcome to Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. I'm Justin, the voice man, Bandy, your host for the hour. I'd like to thank my board operator, Wilbert, yet again. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. And today, I have three guests in the studio. I have Amanda Lalos, Akela Munsley, <laughs> and Will Ahrens. Hello, everybody. Hello. Did, did I pronounce names right? Yeah. No. No? How do I pronounce your name? Uh, Akela Muncy. Oh, see, I knew I screwed that up somewhere. Well, okay, cool. Muncy. <laughs> Muncy. I like it. It sounds better that way, too. I'm sure you think so, too. So why are you guys here? You guys are all part of the not... Uh, let me make sure I get this right. I had it written down somewhere. <laughs> and now I've got it missing. I don't know why. <laughs> so, all right, Akela, Amanda, who wants to talk? What is the name of your play? You guys are doing a play. Yes, it is called the Not Too Terrible One Act. It's a, it's a pun. It, it's, it is indeed a pun, and I like puns. It's a pretty ponderful pun. Some people say that puns are like the lowest form of comedy, and I disagree entirely. Puns are my specialty. Much like water and swimming is to a dolphin, puns mm-hmm. give my life a porpoise. Sweet. <laughs> I wish we only had a little and bit I of laughter. I for a half an hour of this. You do? <laughs> only half an hour? You've been living with it for over a year now. I was going to say, you should have way more time. Yeah. So, Amanda and Akela, you guys wrote... Like how many how many stories are in this one act? Eight. Eight stories. Jeez. And how many of each of you wrote? Eight, how many? We each wrote three. And then that means there's two left over. One uh, is mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was not aware that you wrote one in there. Yes. Cool. Um, and one is a local playwright named Mark Harvey Levine, okay. um, who has published a number of his one-act plays and has had them performed over 500 times all over the world. Wow. So, And so what exactly inspired this whole concept of these not-too-terrible terrorable terrorable <laughs> terrible <laughs> rural no, journey. See, that's the problem. People yeah. <laughs> want to keep putting that extra syllable in there. Exactly. No, it's just terrible. Terrible. Not terrible. Mm. Oh, okay. But, terrible. I'm fantastic um, at naming things. Yay. Well, it, Am it, ampersand. It, it, uh. To be, go to the beginning, beginning, um, it was spring of last year when I was told that I would be directing the One X okay. for this fall um, as they're trying to get uh, a little ahead of the game with scheduling uh, the plays. And with that advanced time, I went, okay, let's see what I can do. Cause, and I thought of original stuff because I would have the time. Then with it being October, once I found out what the main stage play was going to be, which I believe changed since then. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, I decided, okay, I'll do some uh, horror stuff, which I've never done. It's outside of my comfort zone as far as doing I don't even go watch horror. I have not seen it. I don't go. <laughs> I still but, haven't watched it yet. Um, a friend of mine used to run a theater company called Visceral Theater Company in Hollywood, and he, that's all he did. It was all horror stuff. Oh, he wow. would adapt uh, Lovecraft and things like that. So I thought I'd try that. Uh, Amanda, uh, came, yes. yes, she came on, volunteered to, to be my assistant director. Almost a year ago. Um, yeah. And But earlier this year, we met and started talking about it, and we started looking for stories to adapt as opposed to trying to come from scratch. We thought it would be easier to find, like, classic stories that we could use without paying rights. Yeah. Um, Keep it cheap. (laughs) This is college. We don't got any money. Yeah. So we started talking about that, started working on that, and, uh, you know, got a bunch of books with those stories and started – we were going to divvy them up between ourselves until this summer I went to see – uh, evening of plays at the Stella Adler Academy for Young Playwrights Festival. Yeah, the yeah. Blanks Young Playwrights Festival. Yes, which the Blanks Young. The Blanks, because Blank. Blank is a theater company that's oh. very big in LA. Yeah, okay. it was their uh, playwriting contest. <laughs> and that was the one that you got into, or yes. No? Okay. <laughs> so I went to see that evening of plays, right. and I had not did not know Kayla was a writer, and so I invited her on to help with the writing. Because let's just be honest, I hadn't really done as much as I should have over the summer. <laughs> um, so uh, then she came on board, and we all met together. And at that meeting, it was I uh, watched them talking and working, and that's what we came up with that they would write and direct them. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. This is sort of this serendipitous meeting over yeah. time. So, Akela, you you won this young playwrights contest, yes, and you got to have your own play, yeah. performed, <laughs> yes. So. You, you got to tell the people about this. This is amazing. Because you're how old again? 
I am 18. Yeah, yeah. and um, this isn't the first time you've been writing anything. Yeah, I've been writing um, since I was 15, and which isn't that long. Um, but I super loved it, and I would write all the time, and I would submit to contests. And then this summer, I finally won one of the contests, and they did my play This American Strife, which is about a 12-year-old trying to be like, Ira Glass, who does this American life. <laughs> I I really wish I had been able to see it. But <laughs> life events got in the way, so I wasn't able to join. And Amanda, yeah. you uh, you seem to follow into this, like, almost an assistant role, I've noticed, because you, you're also assisting Whitney in, uh, in mime classes here at school, and you've done that, what, four semesters now or something? Um, I started with the mime classes in 2015, like okay. re- just taking them. I became Whitney's TA in uh, fall, no, spring 2016 for okay. his voice and movement class, and then from then on, I was his TA for the comedy class, the mime class, and the voice and movement class, and then now I am the TA for Richard Culler's comedy performance class. So you're definitely getting rather prolific with this uh, teaching assistant. Is this something that you intend to do in the future, <laughs> teaching comedy or uh, well, movement, well, et cetera? Well, um, Whitney and I have started teaching mime outside of PCC together. Oh, really? Yeah, we have a job coming up in January. We're teaching a four-hour, like, uh, what's the word? like a workshop for teens? Okay. We teach them mime and huh. a ton of physical performance stuff, and then they create a play and they put it on that day. So that's my next big project. Prior to that, uh, we went to Gabrielino to teach a short master class on body leads. Wow. So you're get, definitely getting out there with this. And it kind of reminds me of Will with you. Didn't you get um, an acting class that you were teaching outside of PCC? Because I know at one point, uh, with Will Hickman switching over to full time and you know taking over the two two C and two B classes, you were kind of like, hey, I want to I wanted to teach these advanced things, so I'm going to do it. And that what you did? Yeah, I I still currently have some. Pro- I I wouldn't. It's not a full class. I don't have okay. a space. I have a few a uh, few what I would I would call more private coaching. But yeah, on Monday okay. nights I do that. They come over and we work through monologues, audition pieces, scenes, whatever you know will help them at the time. I like this. I got various prolific people. I mean, I remember. Okay, so this isn't even the first time all through are full of eh, words. All four of us have been in the same room because <laughs> yeah. we were all together in Will's class mm-hmm. last it's like a spring. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's the most awkward reunion I think I've ever been in. And I've been. I went to my ten year. <laughs> I went to my high school ten year reunion. And that was pretty uh, awkward. Why did you do I that to yourself? Because I was an idiot. I still am. Fair enough. It was such a dumb idea. Nobody wanted to talk to me. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was there for like an hour and I wasted that hour. But you know what? I learned I'm not going to 20 year. Well, you're not even close to your 10 year reunion. How can you already say that was a stupid thing to do? I'm three years away. Okay, you're three years away. <laughs> and if you didn't like or years, talk great. to the people at that school, what's the point in going back? If, especially if you don't have any communications with them whatsoever. Yeah, this is my high there. school. Exactly. Basically, this was so yeah. that your acting class, Will, was my high school class. So okay. this is my high school reunion. Really? Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. This is maybe perhaps a better one. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, and not only does do I remember the fact that obviously we were in that class. I remember quite a bit about it. I mean, I remember Amanda, you helping me out with so many things that I was horrible at, and people kept telling me I was good at, and I still don't think I am. But whatever. Um, you know, just give a lot of advice. And from what I understand, um, I've talked to a couple of people in the cast who also appreciate your directorial approach and that they are rather uh, excited to continue working with you guys for this play. That, that's good. I paid them each 10 bucks to say that. Harmony, you lied to me. <laughs> oh, Harmony. I love you. She said she said wonderful things. I don't remember them specifically because I didn't record them, but you know how it is. <laughs> Um, well, it's a good thing you didn't record them. Yeah, that would be awkward, right? Yeah. Especially because, you know, this whole two party consent state and all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> I'd just like Laws. to note that I keep nodding in agreement and realizing that none of you people can he- can see right? or hear that. No. So it's strange. I'll make an effort to be vocal. Don't do it too much because then nod, it sounds weird. Nod, nod. <laughs> That's fine, though, because it's awkward. It's weird. Um, I remember the autodramas from both of you, in fact. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> And so to <laughs> kind of segue, do. I do. Like I remember quite a bit from various things, but what I wanna, I wanna get actually from you, Will, 
since this is, you know, this is an educational program to a degree. I want to. I want. <laughs> oh, your program. I thought you meant the camp. My, no, 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 no. Again, this is this is about like all okay. the things going on. So, I'd like you at least, you know, a rough sort of description of what an auto drama is for people who don't know what one is. Okay, an auto drama is telling a story that was important to you. Um, and of course, this is my interpretation. It was originally created by a guy named Mel Shapiro at UCLA. Um, and actually, Will Hickman apparently uses it. I was the first one to use it here. Nobody else really knew of it or used it. But it, since Will Hickman came out of the UCLA program, he actually uses it as well. Yeah, I think so, he actually worked with Shapiro at some point. Yeah, I think he mistaken. said. I don't, he's yeah, been he dead a while. He dropped his name quite a couple of times oh, in did, that class okay. before the auto dramas. Oh, uh, so. okay. <laughs> I only knew him through the book. And okay. being a USC person, the fact that I accepted to do an exercise created at UCLA is quite a stretch. It's, al- it's almost sacrilege it really it really is <laughs> but it was good yeah. because yeah um now i use them differently i had used them differently in beginning in advanced acting classes but uh, i think in shapiro's it's supposed to be like 10 minutes long i would i had shortened Close it to, five. to that yeah i think it's like yeah. eight but you you tell the story to the class and um i think i also modified it with ad- asking for a performance aspect yes, to it you did. i don't believe that's actually in the original um, because, and I was very happy I did that because I think the reason you probably remember theirs is because of the performance mm-hmm. aspects of their story, not just their story, but how they chose to s- tell it. And that you, Amanda with Jim, yeah. um, we should specify who Jim is. Yeah. Who is Jim? <laughs> oh, I was going to try to let that be a little mystery. <laughs> I wasn't because I was going to talk about it at some point. Uh, okay. anyway. We can get to that. Continue on. We'll, okay. then we'll let Justin come back. So anyway, so that's what it is. And they perform their story with a performance aspect. And it, uh, I really think it brings the class together. It, uh, I've seen some amazing stories told, uh, and that really helped people to get to know something more about them that they wouldn't have known otherwise if not telling the auto drama. Yeah, I. Uh, th- there's actually a number of them that still resonate with me. I remember Naomi's. Um, mm, yeah. Obviously, I remember you guys, and and you guys for some reason I don't know why, but I think I remember you guys the most. Really? Uh, yeah, and it maybe it's just because you guys this this show has been on my mind, and so mm-hmm. I'm just trying to dig as many things out of my brain <laughs> right. as possible. Yeah. So uh, it, it, that is what it is. The reason I even brought you like I can remember yours, Akela, is because you brought all of these journals with you, like all these just. I write all the time, and I've been needing. I, I make people do things, and like she's a director, and she doesn't even know it, or maybe she did. I don't know. And now you're in the position to do it, right? You know, and you, you young playwright winning. You know, so obviously there is something longstanding. You have this obsession. You have this yes. drive. Yes. Ever and since I was very little. Ever since we were little. All I wanted to do was tell people what to say and what to do so <laughs> being a director might be good i don't know about anywhere <laughs> else uh, and then obviously you have to listen yes hopefully you're doing that <laughs> well dictator would be another good job for that. yeah true, yeah. Be, I true. Mean, i considered that one for his job. i considered that yeah. one yeah akela munzolini <laughs> yeah oh, no. uh, oh, she's bad. that's a good pun. collective knee slap Yay. <laughs> that's funny and also terrifying yeah. would which you say it's is terrifying maybe it's that was totally terrible, uh, which I'm guessing is kind of the nature of this play. Is it going to be like funny horror terror or just like straight up? There's a range. Yeah, yeah. yeah we I mean, got obviously a... no spoilers, but well, no, no spoilers. Uh, there's um, there's stuff that's more eerie, stuff that's creepy, stuff mm-hmm. that's more psychological, stuff that's more literal horror story yeah. style. All right, it all yeah, varies. and the total horror. It, it, Goes the range from silly to horror. Yeah. That's good. Well, you know what? We've got to take a short little break. Uh, we'll be back and we're going to talk a little bit about Jim. Okay, this okay. is Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org.
Welcome back to Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. And before the break, we were talking to Kayla and Amanda and Will, who are here for the not-too-terrible One X that will be coming this weekend, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Now, Sunday, it's what, 5.30 or 5 o'clock? 5. That's right. I always forget that, even though I was in a play myself. At that time. <laughs> so we were talking about auto dramas and various things. And Amanda has a friend named Jim. Now, how do you spell Jim's name? Just uh, G-Y-M? J-I-M. Oh, okay. I thought it meant like G-E-M or G-Y-M because no. maybe you were trying to make puns somewhere oh, with no, it's homophones. Just Jim. just Jim. And who is Jim? Uh, well, do you guys want to meet him? Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, guys. My name's Jim. Uh, hey. Hey, what, what Can up? Can you hear me? Cool. Yeah. Wow. Hey, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to know about me, buddy? Um, what are you? Uh, well, I'm a small dog, you know, just trying to live my life, trying to get out there in the world, living here in SoCal. It's pretty hard being a dog. I sleep a lot, and then I wake up, and I'm always surrounded by, like, actors and stuff, and there's always this girl behind me with glasses, and I don't really know why she's there. But... Who, who is that girl with glasses? Is, is that Amanda? Yeah, it's that girl. Oh, uh, okay. And, yeah. and how do you two know each other? You know, I never really pinned it down, but she's just always there, and I tell her to go away, but then when she goes away, it's like I'm asleep. And then when I wake huh. up, she's there. Wow. So uh, is this like a godlike person or something? Oh, my goodness. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> oh. Oh, I've been so mean to her. She's going to smite me. Oh, well, that's uh, that's horrible. <laughs> Maybe you should uh, head on out and go apologize to her. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for the, the suggestion, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jim. All right. Cool. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, could, you tell a little, <laughs> could, could you tell us a little bit about your relationship with Jim, Amanda? Uh, yes, this is Amanda again. Um so I am actually on top of all of the things I do here. I am also a trained puppeteer. I trained with a former uh, Muppet and Sesame Street puppeteer named Michael Earl. He was he did a lot of projects. At 19, he was um, the performer for Snuffleupagus on Sesame Street. He was also in Team America World Police, which he won, I believe. What did he win for? I think he won a Golden Globe for that one. Oh, wow. And so I trained under him for about a year and some of his protégés, and uh, I'm assuming, well, one of the things about Jim is Jim is going to be in our show. Really? Yes. Okay. That's good to know. Yes. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've seen him, so it's <laughs> definitely a... Uh, yeah, he's been uh, visiting PCC a lot, today, mostly course. in a bag, and then he uh, <laughs> comes out when the actors do. He's one of them acting types now. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. we, need, we need more actors in, in this school. You know, it's funny, I, I'm... I work at the pizza press, obviously, you know, because your pizza was like one of the first pizzas I made. <laughs> um, I feel and, so honored. Yeah, I know, right? I don't know if it was good or not. But uh, there's actually a woman who came up at one point, and I think she she works at FIDM. Oh, wow. And she mentioned something along the lines that she works around the world of puppeteering, and I remembered you. I was trying to get her contact info, but <laughs> she didn't like want to pass it off or anything. She didn't have a card <laughs> or nothing. I was like, no, come on. I want to find this. I want to get this info to you. But it's whatever, uh, so I'll keep my ear to the ground, as it were. And uh, I know you two guys, uh, Amanda and Akela, you're you're gonna have to leave soon. Uh, <laughs> why why are you gonna leave so early? Huh? Couldn't couldn't give me a whole hour of your life. We have, have callbacks, <laughs> <laughs> as they said in unison in a very oh. creepy fashion. Oh. There's a noise. Goodness, was, there was a weird noise. What was that? I don't know. It was like a hiccup. <laughs> Oh, it was Archer. He's cheering. I... He's cheering us on. For <laughs> Amanda is very reactive, which is good for being an actor. I'm very jumpy, which is the ironic part of me working on this <laughs> yeah. show. Uh, is that I'm the I'm jumpiest so... <laughs> person at this school right now. So, in other words, if these people do their things right, they're, you're just going to be back there jumping all the time, yeah? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So, okay, considering the, the nature of this play and everything and the fact that you guys wrote it, I, is this like a, is this the first time this is a student-produced play at PCC or somewhere along those lines? I'm not certain. But I haven't heard of anything otherwise. 
As to this extent, uh, I believe yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I do believe Will Hickman when he did an evening of one acts uh, allowed different actors to direct? I couldn't yes. remember how much. Yeah, the the Trepidation Nation okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. last fall they they did directorial stuff, but they didn't write them. It was like they right. were already yeah, pre. Yeah. 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 So they were already pre uh, pre created mm -hmm. as it were. So this is like almost entirely a unique situ a situation. Because yeah, I think so. You've yeah. got two students who are actually at the school writing a play and directing it, and they're basically telling their friends what to do. <laughs> <laughs> to hopefully make it come to life. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> so there must be a lot on the line for you two. I, I would really like for this to be something that happens in the future for other students yeah. to write and direct actual productions at PCC. Absolutely. And I mean, it has been rocky and there's moments where we're like, oh, we don't know what to do and of how course, do we tell yeah. our friends they have to come to rehearsal and all these things. Um, and Will has been amazing with helping us, but sometimes he's even like, no one's ever done this before. I don't know how to deal with you guys. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes it's been a loss, but it's, what we're it, getting out of it is so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's difficult because um, as much as I'm not entirely like it, Kayla, as far as the I want to tell people exactly what to do. <laughs> I remember that. Um, I do like, yeah, I want to guide them toward what I want them to do. Uh, so it's just a different approach. You have a strange Still approach want them to do it, <laughs> but, but I have to step back from that, but not so much as, like, when it's been done in the past, if even though that you allow somebody to direct, you have to help guide them in the direction because mm -hmm. they haven't done it before. Um, and yes, you learn while you're an actor and you're working on stage with other directors, you will see how they approach things. But how to fix things or how to approach an actor, uh, how to work them through a moment that's difficult, they haven't done. So it's tr it, the thing for me is trying to find when I should step in and when I shouldn't. Yeah. How much is just give a note? How much is go hands on? Because as a director, I'm very hands on and I all my production in the past is really work with the actors. And I've had to step back from that a lot, which is so. It's like you're. We we just finished watching um, The Godfather in uh, contemporary <laughs> contemporary really? film history. Yes, they watched uh, The Godfather. Yeah, what we a watched it in uh, contemporary film history, and it's like you're the Don who had to step down for when Michael became the Don, and now you're his consigliere. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. That's a little I more probably that. pronounced that word wrong, but whatever. Uh, um, everybody does. Counsel. It's, yeah. Because uh, it's Italian and I'm not Italian, yeah. I'm I'm some white dude from suburbia in Texas. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so yes, it's a much more advisory role. That's good. And how do you guys take it, Amanda, Kayla? How how has that been for you? Uh, this well, whole process. Yeah, coming into this, of the three of us. I was the one with the least experience. I've never written for stage before. The only things that I've ever directed, other than like film stuff, was mime performances, which is fairly different than something with dialogue and scene changes and actual props, not mime props. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been consistently terrified, which I suppose <laughs> is effective for the show, but um, there you go. trying to get through it and trying to find like the best way to work with the actors and work with everyone and get things doing, get, uh, get things done or going, mm -hmm. doing, sorry. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, one of the things that I recognized as somebody, it, I don't really consider myself too much of an actor. I've only taken three classes and I mean, I enjoy the process and I want to continue doing it. It's just life has different plans right now. But I noticed that yourself, especially of, of the three of us that I can think of, you're more of the veteran. I don't know. Maybe you've had a lot of training, Akela, but I'm not sure. I think I'm. I mean, I'm more too young point. to have. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, okay. Will is the veteran in the room. Yeah. But of the three of us who are the uh, newer students, I would say that in order to be a director, you need to be an actor, or at least you need to know how to talk to actors. Uh, because there are some people who want to be directors, but they don't have the proper dialogue. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to yeah. inform the right way and I would say that that's probably one of your advantages well, being the, in the position you're in. The thing is um, Akela probably has more experience than me because my first ever acting class was um, acting 2A here. Me too. And it, uh, other than that um, outside of PCC even like middle school it was only mm -hmm. like the thing where every student had to be on stage it wasn't a real <laughs> thing. My first yeah. ever audition and casting process 
it was both at once, was for Adding Machine last year. That was the first time I ever okay. auditioned mm-hmm. or got cast. Well, you were also in musicals, though. Wait, or I think, no. no? Oh, no, no, that's right. That was the musical theater class. Yeah. Not an actual, okay. So yeah. that, I was I'm thinking of a different I'm fairly one. new to this whole thing. It's been okay. about a year since I started. Well, admittedly, you, uh, from from my own personal experiences and from what others, it sounds like you're in a good position. So I would say keep going because keep going, it sounds like it's good. I do way too much, guys. Don't follow my example. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, moderation, including... You won't sleep. <laughs> moderation and everything, including yeah. moderation. Yes. Kayla, uh, what, you're, you're going to leave soon, so yes. anything that uh, is on your mind right now that just you, you want to talk about briefly? Um, I think mainly um, I want people to see the show very badly because what's so amazing about this project is that everyone's involved even the actors will be like what if we did this funny joke and because we are students we're like yes of course we can learn from you the actors as well and I think because it's such a learning experience for everyone it's all about discovery which is such an important thing in theater itself so it's truly a piece about discovery and I'm so excited to have that and I hope we have more stuff like that um, throughout PCC any final thoughts Amanda Um, Something that is also pretty unique and special about this is that we are primarily a female production. Yes. We have, I think, including Will and our sound designer, we have, I think, seven guys and it's a 24 person production. The rest are girls. Wow. Yeah. And okay. it's yeah. really, when you're in the theater world and you look at musicals and plays, most of the good stuff, most of the strongest stuff goes to the male actors. Mm. So it's really refreshing to see so many girls on stage and doing really heavy parts. And even um, for the Tonys, uh, when Fun Home won, which was, I think, two years ago, it was the only, it was the first ever female writing duo to win best musical yeah That's so awesome. it's it's really writing we need more females of that. Yeah, yeah and directing women, women have much. a lot to offer in mm-hmm. pretty much every element of life mm-hmm. and yeah. if there isn't enough there isn't enough recognition uh mm-hmm. in my opinion and so we need to get more recognition as it is um well thank you kayla and amanda i know you guys gotta go will's <laughs> yeah. gonna stick around he said for at least another 15 minutes right Thank yeah. you for All right. <laughs> Absolutely. You. I appreciate you showing up. Also, there's a cricket over here that I think yeah. is dead. <laughs> either dead or alive. Rest in peace, know. friend. Uh, so uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> this is Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. And uh, we just had Akela Munzee and Amanda Lalos in here. They are writer-director of the upcoming play, one-act play. Z- plays. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, an amalgam, of like eight, you said, eight. right? Eight plays. Uh, Sunday, 5.30. 30? 5 o'clock. 5 p.m. I always do that wrong. Every time, I always do it wrong. It's 5 p.m. Monday and Tuesday is 7? 30. 30. See, that's where I screw that's it up the every time. Yes. Um, All right. Yeah, it's not always, I don't believe it's the best way of scheduling. Nope. Especially because the guy across the hall that always uh, has to suffer from it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's just the times because you're yeah. like, wait, which is it? Because people do. People <clears throat> yep. will show up at 5.30 and be late on mm-hmm. the Sunday and show up at well, seven o'clock at least. They're at early. least early on the yeah, other two days. The other two, but they usually almost always sell out, especially because they're like free for students, right? Uh, oh, they are now, I believe. Yeah, because I think it was used to be five dollars. Yeah, I'm not in charge of box office. Yeah. So, uh, and if you want to, it's it's like ten dollars uh, for pretty much everybody, but it's free for students. I think they raised the price, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Because they and used I'm to be. Run, you're right. That, yeah. that would be higher than I. It remember. used to be five for everyone, and then I think with students it was free or something. But then now, okay. then they dry, they raise the price. For the ticket, but it's still free for students and okay. staff. Um, so yeah, if you're a student, why not come see a play for free? You got no budget anyway. <laughs> and if if in, if anything, I, I love seeing the one acts because you get to see how you get to see the space 
evolve or change in a very, mm. I mean, it's not a gra- grandiose way, but it's still interesting to see how the directors will change the, change it up to make it look right or look how they want it to make it. I mean, you're using the yeah. space and it's not a lot, but it's something. Well, the thing about one acts versus a main stage production is uh, there's more left on the audience. Mm-hmm. They have to use their imagination because you're not going to have the sets that you have. Yeah. When you create something for the main stage, you're creating this set in this other world. Whereas in the one act, since you have to change from play to play, you really can only do it with minimal props and set pieces. So it's up to the audience to fill in the blanks. Mm. Yeah. And it works. I mean, definitely as, uh, you know, I've only been in the one Romeo and Juliet, and then we did the second okay. version of it. Mm-hmm. But um, I can... that That's a little different version because that was actually... That that's a play. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Still no set, but then Shakespeare yeah. worked with no sets, so that's of course. Yeah. And and I think that's what helps is like uh, one one of the compliments that I got on a regular basis was that people understood what I was saying, like mm-hmm. not just that they could clearly hear what I was saying, but especially the Shakespeare buffs, they understood that I understood what I was saying. Um, right. And I the think that the helps. Content. Yeah, the meaning and the content, and that helps to sort of illuminate the subtext mm-hmm. in in what it is that you're you're trying to convey as an actor. Um, I guess we can kind of go around, uh, go down that road of subtext in in the world of because you're an actor, but now you're more of an acting professor. Yeah, because I know you still want to act, right? Actually, um, uh, as it <laughs> is, I'm actually less a professor these days. Oh. Um, I w- yes, I w- I'm, I have the one X and I have one other class this semester. Okay. Um, and yes, I'm taking on students outside as well. But no, I still, I work with a theater company called uh, New Ensemble Theater. Okay. And uh, they are currently actually running three weekends of their own horror thing, which I told, the, Halloween, baby. I told the artistic director, I said, you stole the idea. <laughs> um, theirs is called Tales from the Script. Oh, God. Yes, instead of crypt. I bet Amanda likes that one. I, actually, I just realized I'd never told her that. She really? I appreciate that. Oh, well, yeah, you'll have to tell her later. But they opened this past weekend, and they're actually, the play that I wrote is in that collection as well. So really? the play will be running at two different places. Oh, okay. So, so you're now seeing like two different uh, variations, see, t- adaptations. Yes, two of different it. versions of it. Okay. Yeah. Which one uh, do you like so far? The if one you, that's in my head? because yeah. <laughs> it's the only one that's perfect right, right. exactly because <laughs> um, I wrote it and I yeah. am like uh, and I didn't and I didn't get to like uh, with Kayla what I would have liked to have done uh, with the other company is every time he had a rehearsal I couldn't make it he oh. invites the writers to come and give their input I couldn't make a single one no so that they, they had no it's what he decided to do is what it is that's I, I a have no input um, at least with the Kayla, I have input, mm. um, but I don't want to overstep that and take over. Which yeah, like again, you were saying you don't want to, you don't want to be the guy taking over. You yeah. want to be the counsel. No matter what I believe and how I think it's going to go, that's you have to, you know, let other people. And there are, I mean, th- as far as acting, there, are, you know, there are many choices mm-hmm. of how to perform something. There are also many wrong choices. Oh yeah. Are, <laughs> That's what people say. People, there is no single right choice, but there are thousands of wrong choices. Oh, yeah. But there are, is variation. As long as you stick to the script, and that's as an actor and a director, that's what I've always tried to do is take what the writer wrote, find what's in there. The nuggets are there. He planted the seeds. I'm mixing my metaphors. Um, <laughs> I'm digging for gold. Can, I planted in the go. garden. Uh, <laughs> just throw some more in there. Just, yeah. So, Let's but have ambrosia. They're there. If you just go and look for them, yeah. just don't do your own thing. Don't don't go to the cliche, the simplest interpretation, but dig in there. And be, by doing that is where you find what really makes a character come alive and what should make an actor excited is when they find that stuff and go, oh, I get to play that. I, I want to apologize for being a pain in the ass during class. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like, it, it's not you so much that I knew better. One? Huh? No. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't matter because, you know, it's still okay to apologize for something, okay. you know. But no, you I, should I never apologize anyway. for it. No. Well, uh, but I guess I learned so much in that class despite the the, the constant sort of struggle. That mm. I mean, mostly it was probably for my own self. I don't know. But, um, you know, because I've dealt with all sorts of crazy stuff in the last several years. Mm. But, you know, I learned a lot. In your class. I think, in fact, I learned more in your class than I have in any of my other acting classes so far. Oh, I, and I hope so. Thank you. Granted, I, I still don't like Howard Fine's book. 
I prefer Audition way more. It's such a good book, and I like the Uta okay. Hagen questions, which Fine obviously took on. I think, honestly, for me, the one thing that I could recognize was that Fine talked like I do. It's a little too disjointed at times, it feels. Okay. So that's probably why it was annoying for me. Okay. <laughs> it's not as organized as I'd like it to yeah. be. I, I Beyond have to say, that, I won't say anything else. <laughs> I, I, I forgot that it, that was the book we were using that semester. I've yeah. always experimented with trying to, that's how I found the Mel Shapiro book. Yeah. Um, uh, An Actor Prepares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a great book, great. Uh, Sitting in my storage right now. Yeah, it it's beyond the auto drama. It has some great chapters. The problem is it's a tiny little book that costs like 80 bucks. Yeah. And for students, I don't like to... Oh, wait, no, that's not know. the one I have. So I use Uta Hagen because Uta Hagen gives that same thing as mm-hmm. does Audition, and Audition costs all of $10. Yeah. And Audition is what I use with my outside students. That's like, because the no, the the terminology is to, is so simple. Yeah. Just what's the relationship? It's an easy book yeah. to digest. Find the moment before. What Find the love, mm-hmm. the humor. I have used stupid. all of that talking yes. with people. I mean, I've been... I've talked to guys. I, I was uh, was conver- I was in a potential project that got scrapped, but uh, during this past summer, where we were, um, what was the thing? It, we were going to be like Confederate things. It was after the, or we were going to be like pretend to be racist, and it was after all the, n- the whole crazy Nazi thing that happened. Okay, um, so it it was timely. <laughs> But it wouldn't have been good to air at that moment. It would have been good to film it and then maybe like say six months down the line, then we have we, we actually showcase it. But anyway, um, I was talking to these guys and the two of the the other actors that were there, they had taken like big expensive acting classes mm-hmm. in the area and I was like, Have you guys read audition? And they're like, What are you talking about? I was like, You need to pick up audition. It's ten dollars. Read the book. Because I have I have heard it so many times in my head. From all of your lessons, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I do everything I can to avoid using the word "just." Yeah, <laughs> because it, it's oh yes, a I'm good doing it to point. this group too. Good, because it is in fact it, it's been really really helpful. Because you, I think um, at one point, Orion's auto drama when he was on the phone with his mom, mm-hmm. and he says, "Oh, I'm just doing blah blah blah," and you said, "Well, when you say just." you kind of diminish what it is that you're saying. And so to that other person, there's this psychology that says, oh, well, it's no big deal. So I can I can take up more of that person's time. Yeah. Uh, so how you say things yeah. really does matter. Yeah. And can I explain that to people what I do? The just thing? No, you haven't explained it on this show yet, but you can no, go ahead if you want. Yeah, it's the idea of this for, and this is in life, even though it's an acting class, it's in life that how we use that word so commonly, mm-hmm. and it does, it makes it, it's just this. It's like just it, like literally you could say, oh, it's just my sister. Mm-hmm. Wow. You just diminished the importance of your sister. Why don't you just say it's my sister? You said it's the same my thing. Friend. See, you take the just out. The mm-hmm. sentence still makes total sense. Yeah. Why is the word in there? And you have to examine why you use that word at that time. And of course, for those who are going to go, if you just did something, yes, you can use the word. Yeah. You said I just had <laughs> It's not a hundred percent. Yes. So don't people who are going to go, but that word works. For-. No. And it's also just, you, when you can put it where it's unnecessary. It when it's necessary. Yeah. Even if you do want to diminish. Yes. That's when it's, imp- but that's when you want to, to use d- it. Exactly. Not as a throwaway. You don't want to just throw it away inside yeah. your, your, your line yeah. because then you just diminish it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's usually again not in the line, but if yeah. yeah, if you're trying to make something like it's not a bad, oh no no, like if somebody broke something, yeah, and you don't want to make them feel bad, no no no, it was just just a plate, yeah. So you don't want to exactly. make it. You don't tell them that that was the antique heirloom from your grandmother. Um, you it say was it was five thousand dollars. Why in the hell was it even so, available to be viewed? Exactly. <laughs> so yes, if it's used, but you have to be aware of what you're saying and and yeah. how it affects, like you said about subtext. What does it mean subtextually when you use yeah. that word? And what do you mean by subtext? Subtext, that what you're really saying. Some people will say that no line you ever say is really what you're saying in a play. Mm. It's, it's always the subtext. What do you really want? What's really happening? I would say that's life, too, in a yeah. lot of ways, because you have a thought in your head, and often you don't want to say exactly what you're saying, yeah. or you're thinking, rather, and so you say something else, uh, that's in line with that. And also, it's kind of hard sometimes to just translate your own thoughts. Yes, it is. And that's what you have to do with the script. Mm-hmm. You don't play the actual lines. You play yeah. the subtext. You figure out what that is. Yeah. What you are really saying, I mean, you know, 
Like when you walk up, when a guy, okay, let's just take a simple one. A guy walks up to a woman in a bar and go, wow, you're beautiful. Okie dokie. Is he complimenting her? Or does he want something? <laughs> well, the way you just said it, it sounded like he was being sarcastic. <laughs> okay, sorry if my delivery was bad. <laughs> That's okay. Um, probably because if I, the person who did that, I would already have an opinion of them. Yeah. Which came through in the way I said it. Um, but no, he wants something. Yeah. But he's not going to say that. He's not going to walk up and tell her what she wants. Cause he wants because he'll never get it. Yep. He has to use his words to get there. All right. Well, you know what, Will? You've got to leave now, don't yeah. you? Yeah, well, that's go. unfortunate. So I'm going to be here alone for the next 15 minutes. Thanks, Will, for joining me. No this welcome. is Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. We're going to take a short break. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. Welcome back to Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This is Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena, streaming live at lancerradionetwork.org. And I want to let you guys know, uh, the not-too-terrible one X terror bull, rather, the not-too-terrible one X are going to be this Sunday at 5 o'clock, Monday and Tuesday, 7 o'clock. We're at, Justin. We're at. Uh, I got the times wrong again. I think it's 530 on Sunday. Always messing up. <laughs> I'm always screwing that one up. They're all going to be in the One Act Theater, which is C1. Sorry, sad, strange little man. Shut up, B- Bill Nye. <laughs> it's not Bill Nye. Did you just call? <laughs> Buzz Lightyear? Oh, yeah. Because I got a bee in my mouth, and that was about it. Jeff uh-huh. Lundquist, by the way, is in the studio with me. What's up, Jeff? Hello. Um, so before we get to talking, I just want to... Kind of do a little bit of follow up there with uh, the not too terrible one X. So there are going to be mature subject matter. This may be frightening for uh, small children, etc. So maybe just leave the little ones at home. Yeah, this is a play, but again, this is this is supposed to be terror inducing. And you know, we got some good people in our theater department, and so I'm hoping that they're going to scare the crap out of you. If they can scare the crap out of me like Stranger Things did, then we definitely got some good stuff going Stranger on. Stranger Things was good. Stranger Things was good. The last time, when I first started watching it, Well, it you actually was, got scared, though? Dude, it's the first time that anything has ever given me any real fright for, like, the characters. Really? Yeah. Dude, Wait. so few things that I ever watch. I mean, most horror-related things are funny to me. Like, if I watch Jason or Freddy or something, I don't get scared. I start laughing That's when people true. get their the heads typical- cut off. Trip and fall, running away. Yeah, yeah, but not even that. I mean, even things that seem suspenseful and seem like, even like paranormal activity and stuff. Those things just are goofy to me. They don't. Yeah. They don't feel frightening in any real way. I saw the first two episodes of Stranger Things last Halloween. I didn't watch the next couple of episodes for like six months. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I get what you're okay. saying. Like, it, it's such a good show. Mm-hmm. Like, I get what you're saying. Like, you actually feel for the characters. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it was a sense of fear for me. It was more, like you said, suspense. Yeah. Like, I was like, well, oh. I think they're kind of, they kind of have, like, a, there, there's, a, there's an overlap. Kinda. Yeah, there's yeah. a bit of an overlap between I those sensations, like I feel. I felt like it was very well done how each episode just kept grabbing you and just mm-hmm. building up the suspense. I yeah, thought. and I thought there were more episodes, and I was sad. I, know. I, know. Only, I thought I, there were ten, and there's only eight. Yeah. I literally, like, I binge-watched it in a night. Wow. Yeah. Like, I had nothing to do. Like, I was like, I had plans, but I was like, oh, wait. Like, they, my friends bailed on me. Oh, well. <laughs> and then, yeah. So, I like, at 8 p.m., I was like, oh, I'm going. And then one by Dude, one. Dude, we should I'm have, like, like, a marathon. 27th, uh, I think. When when it when it the when the next out. one comes yeah, out, comes we should, out. like, rewatch the first season. I'm down. And I then watch the next season again. Um, we can't do it in my place because we have nothing there. Uh, <laughs> and, and if somebody has, like, a decent-sized TV or whatever on Netflix, let's just do it. Binge it. <laughs> let's, have like a, awesome. let's have like a, a, you know, like a sleepover. There it is. That's the word I was looking oh for. God. Let's have a sleepover. A, a, sl- uh, a stranger thing sleepover. A stranger sleep. <laughs> yeah. And we actually have a sound bite of stranger things somewhere in one of those folders on that computer. Oh, dude. Everyone's yeah. inviting. Yeah. So, um, Whatever it is. again, I want to inform the audience, anybody who's going to be uh, joining, going to be watching the not, to- not so terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm going to screw that up so many times. Terrible. 
terrible. Terrible. <laughs> you used to have a soundbite for that. Yeah, that was terrible. terrible. Um, if you're going to watch, if you're going to go attend the not so terrible <laughs> one acts, there may be some content that could be disturbing for viewers. Just do it. But just do it anyway. Go watch. Uh, you know, pull your pants up, buy the bootstraps, and, Appreciate the and art. <laughs> enjoy the, the art thing. And so, like, the nature of this show is behind the fourth wall. We're talking to the people who kind of help make these things happen. Now, Jeff Lundquist, you work live sound. And the last thing I you did, like, in it, yes. dabble a little bit. He dabbles. He, he dabble, gets paid dabble. to do it here at the school, so he dabbles just enough. Um, have you been working on any of the productions at all, or is it just, like, sports-related stuff? Um, I did a clue cream... Uh, a crew cleanup mm -hmm. um, in the Sexton uh, for, I do not know the name of the event. It was our Armenian event. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, it was uh, very hectic towards the end to get all the lights down, all the cables wrapped, and get people in their places where things are going, you know, so. But it was. Uh, and by was, the way, you can relax. Take your backpack off, dude. I mean, we still got a couple of minutes left. Right. But it was, it's awesome because this is um, new to me. But when I was younger in middle school, I uh, I did TA for choir. What? Yeah. And when so, I was a young warthog. And they would just put me out on a <laughs> stage crew. Poor Wilbert. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, if you could see my facial expression. <laughs> he just I, dropped Justin. his face. Like, oh, F and Justin. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was able to do the little the spotlight in mm -hmm. the back, which is pretty fun. Too. Okay. But it is, uh, it's pretty awesome to see people work together and uh, make something s that people come to pay for and like happen, you know. And so why why would you choose to do uh, this live sound thing? So explain live sound to people. Live sound. Yeah, you don't have to go like dictionary definitions. Just, you know, what's your thought of what live sound is? You know, live sound is uh, setting up monitors. What's a monitor? Which is a speaker. For okay. Those people that don't know. Mm -hmm. That's another name for it. And, it's uh, a speaker that you listen to while you're doing whatever you're doing. You can have exactly. monitors in your ear, which is what you see performers wearing mm -hmm. live. Uh, and they ha those things are expensive, too. They're mm -hmm. like really high quality, and they fit their ear like a glove or a mold for their ear. But you can get permanent damage if you, <laughs> if you listen too loud. You know? Well, of course, yeah. Um, but also... About... Uh, what is that sound? It sounds like someone's breaking something. Oh, no. I don't know, um, whatever. It's like a jackhammer inside of our headphones. Sounds like the other <laughs> station. <laughs> there you go. Um, Try but to yeah, just uh, setting up mics, microphones, and uh, setting up events for people to spread their message. So whatever. like when the next musical comes around, you might be working your butt off. Yes, indeed. Because you got to get all those condoms. Haven't haven't had to do it yet, but <laughs> before we <laughs> move on from that, what like how did that even like okay, occur to you? So this is actually a thing, not only just here at the school, but this is like legit. Um, this is though how they protect the body packs. Yep, because bodies are sweaty and wet. What is a body pack? What is a body pack? It is a transmitter. It is a thing that in which if you have a wireless mic or if you just happen to have a corded mic going down your head into your back or whatever. Um, it transmits whatever you're singing or saying uh, to a receiver somewhere so it can go out into the speakers so that the audience can hear you instead of you having to scream your and sing your lungs out to a room that's way too big. Well, the body pack, and if you'll see them all the time, unlike interviews, whenever the like guest turns will around, have refs will have them. If you watch like Jimmy Fallon or something, the guests usually have one in the back too. But in a musical, there's usually a lot of singing and dancing. And under all those heavy lights, they're going to get hot and sweaty. And you don't want them to damage these potentially $1,000 plus uh, pieces of electronic equipment. So you got to wrap them in something that's watertight. And condoms, unsent and unlubricated condoms, are stupid cheap when you buy them in bulk. And so far, it seems as though nobody has found a cheaper method that is also as efficient. So mm -hmm. the kids who were, who are here... Like they come, up, they go into the back when they're getting ready to get their body packs. There's a body pack with a condom next to it. 
<laughs> so, uh, and it's I like, this wait, was a what's going on here? <laughs> so imagine we... that, like, we're getting hot and sweaty today. You got to do some singing. <laughs> here's your condom. Here's your, here's your <laughs> never, wrap it up. And that is, that is the nature of some of the behind the scenes type stuff that we're going to be, you know, learning about through this show. <laughs> behind the fourth wall. Behind the fourth wall. When, when I, uh, drop. One thing I learned with the uh, mic technique is they would place the mic through their hair mm-hmm. and right up place yeah. on their forehead. On their forehead, like it, where the widow's peak is. Uh, yeah. And, and then they, I was pretty surprised. And they use an omnidirectional mm-hmm. pick that all that noise up because there's no way you could pick it up otherwise. Yeah. Like I mean, you could try to use a directional mic like what we're using, which is known mm-hmm. as a cardioid mic. Yeah, don't you hate that? Like when someone speaks and then goes, "Hey, hey, how's it going?" Yeah, everybody? exactly. My microphone's on. Uh, I did some recording yesterday, and then they were trying to share one mic between two people. Oh, and they uh, won't talk at the mic. And yeah, at of all. course. And then she's trying to speak to someone like to her right. So and, yeah, I yeah. want to. I want the microphone to talk to my ear. I want it to listen to everything coming out of my ear. See, we we gotta we gotta teach people how to talk to microphones mm-hmm. because when you're talking to the microphone, and you have a microphone. You're talking to the microphone. Not the person. You look at them. You stare at them. You absorb them. That got creepy. Yeah. You should have a segment of uh, class, you know. Hey, the not too terrible. 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 The not too terrible. One axe is coming soon. That's a terrible idea. It is it's indeed a, ter- a terrible, terrible idea, Charles Barkley. You're no, old go and you don't it. play basketball anymore. This is Behind the Fourth Wall, where we pull back the curtain, where we see it all. This Lancer Radio Network, Pasadena streaming live at lanceradionetwork.org. That's it for t- today. Next week, maybe we'll have a surprise. Thank you very much. Have a great night.